Welcome to this new add-on spotlight. In this add-on spotlight we're gonna look at the working title Garmin G1000 NXI version 0.10.1. So not version 0.10.0 because that one was released but soon it was found out that it did work with several other aircrafts. But of course we're gonna look at 0.10.1 also because there are so many changes in this one. So for example, they modified the MFD procedure preview map, right? So procedure preview map pane uh, for all the procedure types has now been changed. They, it shows all the lag types, including the course re reversals and holds and the soft key for switching between procedure types. In addition to that, there was a change in the flight plan uh, editable altitude constraints, right? Ed altitude constraints are there to set a specific altitude which you need to fly uh, in a certain area, right? That, that sometimes happens uh, due to, I would say, some other high buildings, for example, um, close to the airport or close to the waypoint. And those are now editable in the flight plan. That's cool. Um, and there's an FPA for current lag is now adjustable in the VMV active profile pane, right? Uh, VMV po uh, prof soft key for shortcut to FPA adjustments is now being available. Uh, and this one, the altitudes that break system FPA constraints now indicated by the blue X. Well, let's see if we can figure that out. In addition to that, the system setup page has been adjusted. So you can now change the system display units, right? The nav angle, the distance speed, the altitude vertical speed, the temperature and the weight. And there's an ability to customize the MFD uh, data bar fields for the bearing, destination, distance, etc. And you can, we'll see uh, once we're, I'd say, starting the uh, the aircraft that multiple things have changed. Uh, small change for the comm channel, uh, also for the MFD. And then we're going to the PFD, where it now has a uh, alerts window, which shows the alerts thrown by system. system. Uh, reverse in a remote, display the engine instruments when the MFD is not booted, right? That's very handy because normally when the MFD, which is the second display to the right, is not booted, you can't see the engine. Well, looks like now you can do it. And there's also a reverse in remote on and off screen blink automate or animation, sorry. The system simulation and startup, there are some changes to the start startup process of the aircraft. Uh, that initially also caused the issue with the other air aircrafts. And uh, that's why also the uh, version was quickly replaced with a dot one version. Uh, the boot and initiation times for all the units uh, connected to the correct instruments. Uh, we will show that, or I will show that in, I will say a few uh, minutes because you need to be aware of that. And you can see that the GPS inoperative display indications, instrument inoperative red X display indications, and the, a, uh, the Alpha Hotel Romeo share alignment uh, do not start with correct blank limitations. Uh, then there's some IS uh, support added for the end text on horizon, horizon, horizontal IS gouges and the uh, and support for smooth factor to the IS gouges. Uh, I'll write custom C208 panels. That's for the C208 only to use a newly supported tax. And there's a bunch of fixes included like the uh, flight level change, which didn't work correctly. The incorrect magnetic variation between the direction in the VOR info pages and a lot of other things which they fixed in this new update. There are still some known issues. For example, vectors to final auto switching to CDI will only work if you've not chosen vectors as the transition and you select activate vectors to final. Uh, deactivate VTF when you are past the uh, FAF as measured along the final approach course will cause LNAV to sequence the active lag beyond the FAF. And the world map import from Navigraph and Simbrief do not include the airways. So the airways will not be added to the flight plan. So be aware if you're using either Navigraph or Simbrief and there are airways in the flight plan, then when using the G1000 NXI flight plan, they won't be imported. Uh, what's fixed in version 0.10.1 in that case? Well, there were some issues where the uh, aircraft couldn't be started and they fixed an incorrect uh, airplane alerts group label on the MFD and they removed the errors uh, erroneously added incom incomplete COM identifier box implementation. 
and none issues are still the same. So let's see uh, if we're jumping to a flight simulator now. Uh, let's see what has changed. So we're gonna do the uh, start a little bit quick of the aircraft. So first they're gonna only switch on the master and the battery. And there you will see all the red crosses, right? So these are the red crosses they refer to in the manual. Uh, if something is not started yet or aligned yet, you will see all of these kind of weird things. So initially I also thought, hey, it must be an error or something in the new cockpit, but it is, I would say, normal. Also what you see is now you've got the engine on the left side, which was initially not there, right? The error messages were there, but now you can also see the engine here. You can also uh, hide it if you want. At least I was hoping that you can edit. You can change to lean to system and then go back. Uh, but I don't think that they added the option yet to hide it from here. Uh, it will automatically disappear once the uh, MFD starts, right? You can still see that it changes continuously because the aircraft is, would say, starting as we speak. Well, it's not starting because we only switched on the uh, master and the alternator. Uh, battery but if you would do uh control e now which i'm gonna do now start the aircraft you'll see that the engine starts you will see that the mfd also starts so this is also new right it shows now the version here and also the navigation data uh, then you can simply press a key and then you can see that this screen refreshes and now the engine data is displayed here uh, in the meantime it also started the rest of the uh, systems so you can see that the uh, navigation uh, 2 and the com 2 have now been loaded uh, other than that the buttons here have changed right it has changed uh, completely uh, it looks like a little bit sharper and they made changes uh, to several things right but most things were changed on the right side or on the fly plan side right because you can also set a fly plan here although i do prefer it to set it using the uh, the mfd um so let's uh, have a look at that so here's the mfd right so we can see the engine we can see uh the different options which were already there uh you can also switch on assist not sure what it is um that's what i'm trying to figure out uh, as we speak but i didn't find it yet and we've got the system which shows the system information about the engine Flight plan, nothing weird here, but the good thing is that you see the alternate or the altitude box here, uh, which allows you to change the altitude, right? Uh, for example, to uh, set certain constraints if you want to do it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to set up a direct flight uh, to an airport and I would say I'm still liking this way that I did create this right you can now really uh, look into this and you can uh, zoom in or out if you want using these buttons here so currently we're at SCCI and what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a course to SCFM so let's do that press here S see foxtrot mic i thought it was oh, foxtrot yeah and we're gonna press enter and then we're gonna say uh, activate and you can see that the flight has been added here uh, it hasn't been added here because it's not in our active flight plan, right? To do that, we need to do it differently, right? So you can also do it like this. You can move to here and then, oh, sorry. And then use the uh, scroll wheel from your mouse to set up the uh, departing airport. Let's see. Whoa. One position too far. SCC I and then press enter then you can specify the runway if you want uh, if you don't specify it it will uh, think that you will depart from uh, the place where you're currently located uh, so you can 
for example, set it to uh, runway 7. Um, then we're going to say enter to accept. So now runway 7 has been added as departing airport. Or, yeah, departing runway, I should say. Uh, so based on that, we can move to the different other options. But then I press the wrong key. So let me go to the flight plan again. And let's figure out. No. I'm going to go to the flight plan I said. And then we're going to define the destination, which was SC FM. SC. It's not my day today, it looks like. SC. F. Um, then press enter. Uh, we're gonna edit. Uh, well, we already added it here, right? You can see destination. We're not gonna specify a runway. And then we can also add some, I would say, on route uh, waypoints. Uh, to do that, you don't you can use this button because it allows you to zoom into the map or zoom out. All right, so let's uh, add uh, Charlie Foxtrot uh, 9. Let me zoom out again so you can see it. Charlie Foxtrot 9 was it? Uh, yeah. But I want to have the other values empty. Oh, it's 09. My, my bad. So change it to 09. Yeah, this is it. Press enter and then we can select the one which is closest to us, which is this one. And currently you see that there is no uh, restriction for the altitude, but by using the uh, large knob on the FMS, you can set the core, you can set the restriction. For example, you can set it to uh, 10,000 feet, or if you want to change it to, I would say 5,000, you need to use the large knob again and then uh, move it here and then press enter. And after that, it has, I'd say, changed the option and you're ready to take off. Uh, other things which are interesting, it looks like that are gonna come with some changes like built-in checklists, uh, which you can see here. So I'm really looking forward to that when that's being added. Uh, currently, uh, those options are not uh, yet available. Uh, other than that, you have the uh, large knob, which you can use to switch between displays, right? You can switch between map, and I use the uh, smaller knob to switch between navigation map and traffic map. Uh, the other ones are not yet working. Uh, then we've got the WPT, right? The waypoint, you can get the, uh, or you can use it to get uh, airport information, for example, or, uh, let me, or intersection information and the B information or VOR information, right? And that can be simply done by pressing OK and then enter the uh, information here. Uh, other than that, we can go to the AUX page, and the AUX page shows you a lot. It shows you the display units, uh, the airspace alerts, the GPS, how it's being set, the COM, uh, the arrival alert, uh, which you can modify, if I'm correct. And there are several other things which you can modify, right? You can set the display units here, and that's the other change they made, right? You can now change the uh, it from uh, true to magnetic, that's one of the options and the other options they change is uh, the display and speed which is normally shown in uh, newton miles or uh, knots and you can also change it right to metric uh, whatever you prefer to have so those options you will find them in the aux menu uh, so let me go back to this previous page uh, so you can uh, sc scroll using the big wheel on the FMS and then go to the AUX settings and there you will find all the options 
which you can define for display units. So that's really cool. Uh, nearest airport, you can see that there's a pre-configured value here. Um, I'm not sure if you can uh, change it, so let's let's try that. I don't think you can because I do think that all the fields which you can modify are marked blue. Um, right here are also the MFD bars which you can modify. Um, you can set it to uh, GS, DTK, TR key, TRK, and ETA. And using the small knob again, you can change those options. So you can change the options uh, reflecting to the MFD uh, data bar fields, which are shown uh, on multiple pages, right? So that's cool. Um, as mentioned already, I don't think that you can change the nearest airport yet, but based on this, since they added some new features here, I do expect that it will soon be available here. Uh, the last one thing you can change is the uh, channel spacing for the com. So that's cool. Uh, you can access the fields by entering the button here, right? And then you can start playing around with those values. So going back to the other ones, uh, you can see the fly plan uh, easily, right? We can see, or we can go to the uh, nearest in case we want to fly to the nearest airport or whatever we want. In this case, it's set to the nearest airport, um, but you can also set it to the nearest intersection, NDB or VOR. So all cool options, which can all be accessed by using the FMS controls uh, or by the options uh, here, right? You can simply select the options here. For example, if I want to change my flight, I can uh, use the APT button and the runway button and frequency and approach uh, to easily go to these fields, right? So for example, can di select this one and then use the large knob to make the changes there. So a lot of cool additions uh, in the G1000 NXI. Uh, keep in mind that if you installed version 0.10.0, .0, you might want to check if there's an update because else it might not work for all the aircrafts which you're using. So we're not gonna fly in this, uh, I would say add-on spotlight. We just looked at all the changes which are added to the G1000 NXI. I hope you liked this video. If you liked it, then consider to use the like button. If you've got questions, then feel free to post them in the comment box below. And if you want to stay up to date about new videos I'm posting, then consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.